Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by these great sponsors. When you partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. The Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work. Moving higher in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving higher time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. Moving higher. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast. This is a okay, so this is a special edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. We got Jason Holt and Kyle McMahon, um, Kyle McMahon with Tractor Zoom and Jason Holt with Anvil AppWorks. And I guess probably the easiest way to kick this one off is that you two got married. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in a business sense. <laughs> That's funny. Now, you guys uh, have Tractor Zoom has, has acquired um, Anvil. And That's right. It, this is, uh, I, you know, like we were talking before we got started, you know, to me, this is. From a dealer, dealer eco- ecosystem type of thing, on the sell side and sales process side, you guys have almost closed the loop on on what that looks like. So this is this is a pretty exciting time, and I think you know it's a pretty big deal for what we're coming down. So I guess you know, Kyle, we'll start with you first. You know, what what was some of the stuff behind the acquisition? And how do you, what are some of your some of the goals you think you're going to achieve from that? Yeah, well, number one, we're really excited, um, and, and I think you hit on on a core piece that both Jason and I saw in the market, uh, which is there needs to be a better solution from a sales standpoint. And there's a lot of business systems out there that, that help operate, help operate the company. But when we sit back and look at actual data to drive decisions and inside the sales cycle specifically, Mm -hmm. that is, that is the box that we want to play in helping drive, uh, helping drive top line revenue and margin growth with, with lower risk for these dealers. And so uh, at tractors and we don't buy, we don't, we don't build technology without voice to customer. And it was Dwayne Kotzman Hudson called us a little over a year ago, something like that and said, guys, I love your data. I want to keep buying it, but this CRM thing is really kick ass. How do I, how do I get it in here? Like, what's the CRM are you on? Oh, it's Anvil. It's like, what the heck is this thing? Because Jason was new at the time and, you know, I hadn't, hadn't heard a whole lot, but he was starting to get some traction. And we, we continued building. We integrated our equipment valuation data and comparable sales entire experience inside of the Anvil AppWorks CRM and customers were blown away. So uh, uh, Hudson saw tremendous value. And then we've signed on another six or seven uh, customers that, that are experiencing the same uh, massive leaps in uh, what I'd call uh, just process improvement 
So while you're doing deals, while you're negotiating, using the CRM to get those done, looking at the inventory, now you have all the market data right in front of you to make decisions really quickly. Yeah. Yep. So ultimately, like, okay, we inter- we integrated for customers. We saw the opportunity because the customers wanted it, and it made a lot of sense for us to go down this path to acquire it. Right. So on the flip side of that, what was your motivating factor behind wanting to go down this path with Tractor Jim? Yeah. I mean, the mission of, of Anvil since day one has been a partner with dealers to really run their better their business better, their workflows better. And trade evaluation was one of our key apps. We've got sales pipeline. We've got order to cash and other ones. But when we looked at just what the customers were able to do with that, once we integrated and once we were able to get those values in there and it became just part of that evaluation, you know, and, and you know, Hudson was talking about taking evaluations from 30 minutes down to five minutes each and just being able to do everything from one screen. That's very powerful. I mean, the impact that has on the dealership. So we started talking about how, how could we work better together? And it was like, yes, but there was still this wall between us and everything still needed to kind of be separate and individual, but we wanted to be able to do more and do more. And as we started talking product and marketing and everything else, it was like, well, let's just tear down that wall. And that allow us to do better things for more customers. And from my standpoint, it also allowed us to do it with better resources and more people and just do more of what we were doing, um, just turbocharge it. Yeah. And that's uh, that's what we've been here for since day one was just take care of dealers, yeah. be their partner in this digital transformation journey, help them scale, help them become more efficient. And everything we were doing with Kyle's team was uh, delivering on that 100%. Yeah. So this is pretty rapid fire if you think about it because – at J Doug, at in February of twenty three, yeah. right? Not, it's gonna be fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're talking about that was only yeah a few months ago. You know, just oh, a few yeah, eight months ago, nine months ago now. Yeah, and here we are sitting today. You know, we had that's when you guys had yeah. made that announcement that you were integrating your data into Anvil, and you guys were going to start going down that path. So there's a a big thing there, but you know, that was a big step yeah. as far as how you're taking care of dealers. I guess. And both of you give me your answer on this, but as you look at it now, give me some specific benefits that you think that you're going to help benefit your customers with. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just what the customers are already experiencing. Number one is workflow automation. So streamlining workflows and getting better data in that, in the, inside that experience. What I mean by that is dealers will have the benefit of streamlined CRM workflow and communication within all of your teams, but then it's adding that valuation data to make sure that you're valuing that piece correctly in today's real-time market, not a month ago, not a quarter ago, using real-time data and comparable sales to get that deal done. So ideally, it will it will reduce risk uh, for those dealers taking the, those assets in on trade and so forth. And then ultimately, um, when we sit back and look at, okay, well, where's it going to go? Tractorism is making significant investments into the what I call the Anvil uh, uh, stack on implementation and customer success. Yep. And then we're scaling our data science team um, so Hank, who leads our data science team, he used to uh, work for the Air Force, helping F-22 and F-35 fighter jets fly more efficiently. Just a wealth of knowledge, super brilliant individual to help lead our data science team. So then working with those dealers to identify what are the other products that we can create? Because we're not going to sit here and you know just go create all these whiz-bang things that we think are cool. We're, gonna, we're, we're going to work lock and step with customers to identify what are your pain points? What are your company challenges? What are your company goals? How can we help solve those? Yeah. So Jason, what do you think? Well, I mean, customers are going to just experience a better experience with everything that Kyle just talked about. But being separate companies, right? We had two CEOs, two finance groups, two right. HR groups, all that other type of things. Well, now we get to strip all of that away, share that with TractorZoom's team, and that allows our team to just go full bore right into all of taking care of customers, delivering on time, the promises, the implementations, taking the integrations and just putting them to use at the dealership. And that means more training. That means more capabilities. That means Tractor Zoom Pro is going to continue to develop more things. And that's what I'm really excited about. That's what customers are going to see from us immediately. And um, overall, that just makes everybody better. Yeah. So you brought up <clears throat> you brought up the workflow and the speed of which that needs to happen and and couple of reasons one obviously interest rates are driving a lot of that right yeah. you know the faster you can get off you know you're off your your balance sheet onto somebody else's balance sheet you free up that that time and that space <laughs> when it comes to that um inventory management i think over the next couple of years is going to be just a, a yeah 
amazing thing to have to get figured out, right? Because you're looking at the volume of equipment that's on the market right now, and, there, and that's not we're like the tip of the iceberg of, of what's coming, right? Um, there's a lot of equipment that's going to hit the marketplace, used equipment wise, and it's going to be uh, unlike anything else, just because of the fact of there's so much of it, yeah. and it's going to be so much more expensive than what it's been in the past, yeah. and that's going to require a lot of workflow or a lot of inventory management processes and stuff like that. So Jason, yeah. I know we've talked a million times about the stuff on the podcast when I've had you on, but talk a little bit about some of those, those, those implementations that you're looking at maybe down the road here a little bit that are going to help improve what you already got going on. Yeah. Well, you know, I know Kyle's team has talked about their inspection app and being able to do all that right there on the farm and getting those numbers turned around in five minutes for a customer. You know, and, and I, I love the story you told about how a farmer said, finally, you're using the technology that you've been asking me to use for years. That's the type of experience that we're going to see um, immediately is because we're going to be able to use that implement, that uh, inspection app right in the evaluation app with those numbers. And then guess what? We've got a lot of we've got the dealership information. The dealers have their CRM. They have all the things about them. What we've talked about over is that holy grail is who's going to buy this trade? Well, now we've got all of that information plus all of this information and people like Hank to help us figure out how to match those up and really solve that no inventory, you know, idea that we all have. And uh, that's just one of those things that's just going to get accelerated by taking that wall down between us and just sharing those resources as it comes down through there. Yeah. yeah when we say look, look at the inventory. So Anvil naturally has what I'd call live inventory, right? Something just got bought. Something just got sold. Every salesperson knows it because it's no longer an inventory, right? Somebody just marked it sold, so no, nobody else can sell it. Yeah. Um, when we sit back and look at that, I mean, inside the Anvil, Anvil tool, as this inventory continues to grow uh, in the marketplace, having having those salespeople get the notifications, hey, this, this new piece came in on trade. It's what you've been looking for to sell to that specific customer. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a huge benefit of having those notifications to help increase the deal turn. But then um, for, for those that actually understand or actually know tractors in inventory versus anvils inventory, anvils like what's here, what's now, what's what's on the ground, what's what's for sale, what's not. And then what tractor zoom is, we're actually taking that data so far and we're providing analytics. So uh, our data science team has a model that for for uh, a, a subset of tractors. It's 80% accurate. If that piece of inventory hits 20 days listed on the market, our model is 80% accurate that it will last over 180 days. And it will tell you the specific reasons why it is going to age. So helping be proactive in that kind of sales cycle of, okay, what's the demand coming from the top of the, fu- of the tunnel, of the funnel, the 350,000 users on TractorZoom.com, What's the current demand in the market? What's the current demand inside the CRM? Like there's a lot of these really neat analytical pieces that we can bring together that will continue to drive innovation for these dealers. What the whole mindset is, how can we sell equipment faster? Yeah. That's what we kept hearing over and over again was the help me figure out what I need to know to move this piece of equipment. And we had some of the information because like you said, we had the current information, we had the customer information. But what we didn't have was the bigger picture right. inside the CRM and the, and the dealer platform there as well. Well, guess what he was missing? Uh, on the Tractors in Pro side, you had great information about what is available, whatever was in the marketplace, what's being clicked on, what's not. But you didn't have so much about the customers. Mm-hmm. So now when the dealers agree and we share that through there, we are able to then make those connections across with just a much bigger um, set of information yeah, and just be that much more accurate and that much going through there. And then the other piece of it, now again, this is is some of the ideas, but are like, once TractorZoom Pro tells you, here's why it's not going to sell, what are you going to do about it? And that's where we can bridge over and actually make those actions happen, use some of our integrations to automate some of that, notify people. Yeah, it's like the hot Just make that whole simplify. How do you set incentive programs for sales? Yeah. Hey, guys, we kind of got upside down on this already. Let's let's figure out a way out of it before we last too long because interest rates, carrying costs are no fun. Uh, I think we're, you know when you're running an interest, depending on obviously obviously your your financial provider. If you're running seventy percent interest right now yeah. on floor plan financing, and you have a six hundred thousand dollar cotton picker or combine sitting there, that's seven thousand dollars of interest expense a month. Yeah, 
And you extrapolate that out to, to if you look at some of the dealerships that are out there, when you start looking at real crop tractors, right? So that's right. a new that's a new hot button for everybody, right? Oh yeah. Combines used to be everyone's evil. Now they're just they have a brother now called real crop tractors, <laughs> right? So yeah, you know, so if you're looking at the real crop tractor situation, there's you know some dealerships out there have hundreds of used row crop tractors, yeah, and they probably average in somewhere in the neighborhood of you know four hundred thousand dollars on yeah. average, you know, if not more than that, you know. So you're you're probably looking at something on the neighborhood of, you know, you could have forty million dollars on this row crop tractor sitting out there, and that yep. that's a big number. You start looking at, you know, we used to say we had twenty million dollars of inventory, right? Now we got twenty million dollars of a segment, you know, yeah. and that's that's the that's the thing that that is that is really kind of taking me back a little bit now as you take a look at what's going on in the marketplace it's you're no longer just measuring your inventory yeah you're measuring the segments of your inventory and where those hot where those hot button issues are because it's not just combines anymore or just corn heads or just sprayers or just four-wheel drives or just row crop tractors it's all of it but there's there's so many dollars associated with each one of these things now. It's, you yeah. have to have a good way to manage it and a good way to understand what's going on. And you're managing it so much sooner in the sales cycle now. Exactly. You're starting to manage it from the first time you put it on a quote to trade it in. Right. And now you're managing it through. We used to wait until it got on the yard. Yeah. And then we'd start worrying about it. 20 days old is now six months late on starting to manage it yeah. on a lot of these things. Yep. I actually heard a uh, top producer was doing some interviews of the top producer winners. And one of the farmers actually said was, we're going to start pushing back because dealers have been using us as floor plan for bringing equipment in. And we're going to have to start looking at our, in, our interest expense and start making sure that that's not yep. happening anymore. And I was like, Ooh, wait a minute here. They figured us out. Yep. Uh, exactly. <laughs> hey, he told you. <laughs> well, one, one, of, one of the, one of the uh, like coolest things that I see about this is actually managing. So with the power here, we can continue scaling how the CRM works yep. and it's, it's going to come down to, how can we manage professional sales teams at these dealerships yeah. with actual data that's inside the CRM yeah. and then market data on top of it? Yeah. So you have what's in the CRM and helping helping us help dealers manage their sales teams, become professional like dashboard managers. Hey, this inventory is not moving. The, now the tractor zoom's data is telling me the glut is, is stacking up. I'm seeing the inventory across the market climb. Prices are declining. The, the supply de- demand gap is widening. Yeah, I need to figure out how to way. I need to figure out a way to manage my sales team. Yeah, yeah. and actually put real incentive programs together instead of just saying, "Oh shoot, you know we're getting long. Let's just take it all to auction." Right? What are those steps you can take between days, you know, thirty and, and one eighty that that you're not going to just have to liquidate long term? Yeah. So there's I have I have three pillars that I live by when you're looking at. Everything that you do, one is the, the three-legged stool of of uh, you start looking at um, you got uh, your sales mix, you got your inventory turned, and you got your wash off cycle. That's that's rule number one, right? That's those are kind of the pillars of the sales department, right? Yep. Or inventory management. I mean, then you start looking at what I call the nine month rule, right? So then every if something's been on the lot for longer than nine months, it, you're probably not going to sell, mm-hmm. period, because. Yeah. There's something wrong with it, or it was sold already. That's the mentality they have, right? right? And then you got, then you have the other, the last thing that I talk about that I call seventy five and under, right? And that's you. Everybody has seventy five customers that they can physically go out and have an as- association with, right? Yeah. You got to think about you breaking that down A, B, C, D. You know, you got the A customer that you see every week, the B customer you see every month, the C customer you see every quarter, and then you got the guy that you see once a year, or you know something crazy happens, and then you go out. You know, whatever. There's they come to the store buy something, but they're 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 on the fringes of that. The majority of your time is spent on your A and B customers, right? And that might only be twenty five or thirty customers that fit in that mold. Yeah. The reason that why that is so important to understand who that is and what that is is that when you have those machines that you trade in, yeah. who are you going to? Right? Where are they going to? How fast can you get them there? Where are they at in their trade cycle? All that information, and I th- I think you guys are kind of putting a bow on that. Yeah. Tori, now you have that capability to really start not just tracking what the customers bought, but how often they're buying it, how much they're paying for it, and what what does it look like when you go ahead and make that thing. I think that's one of the key takeaways that I'm seeing here. It is, and other industries have taught us that you can only do that so well manually. Right. And when you add analytics and data and process and digital transformation to that, 
that's when you're able to truly take care of those 75 customers. And that's when you're able to say, here is something I have to sell. Let me find the right people for it. Other industries have been doing this for years. We just have been applying this technology. And now together, we're going to be able to do that even better. Yep. Um, and that's the difference a dealership's going to see with, with our products is that ability to take the solid foundation. Those rules haven't changed that you just highlighted for the last 30 years, but they've always been hard to do at scale. Right. And now they're going to have the tools and the techniques and the, and the partner to be able to do that at scale to where all 75 customers are, are taken care of, maybe you have 100, right. you know, and just do it better. And those are the tools that are in both of our products, and now they're going to be in one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I think that's a that's an amazing thing. Um, so as you're looking at the broader market of, of yeah. all of, all equipment, right? So now you have a, a functional working system now that you can sit there, not only on the X side but the construction side too, right? So yeah. talk a little bit about what you see happening on the like the the grander scale of just the equipment business as a whole. Jason, you have a couple. Envil has a couple of customers on the construction side. Yeah. Right? You know, and what we've learned, um, we've got several customers that are on both the ag and the construction side, some just construction. And the basics are still there. What some of the changes are, like maybe more rental, maybe more check-in, check-out, maybe more inspections pieces of there, more preventive maintenance, maybe more history um, into there. But the foundation is the same. We still want to be able to take great care of customers. That takes information. That takes process. And then we still need to be able to understand what that machine is worth. Um they're a little bit further along in some of the tools that they use for that, you know, with the PM schedules and where we're at and total rebuilds. But that that customer base is is hungry for the same information and the same process improvement that we can bring to that. And, um, you know, they're as good, if not better than anybody else in those same sp- same spaces of, of CRM, inventory management, check in, check out and just being able to scale as well. The same pressure that's hitting the ag market today and these dealerships consolidating is hitting the construction side as well. And uh, large customers, customers that demand professional sales teams, that's construction market. Yep. Yeah. And, and to that point, like we're going to continue to see consolidation in the market, right? Sure. But I, but I think the, the biggest point there is as these dealers get bigger, they will require yeah. more sophisticated technology to operate their sure. business. Yeah. And you know, I, I recently did what I called the CEO Roadshow. I called up uh, seven CEOs of, of dealerships of varieties of varying sizes and just asked, like, where's the market going? How are you managing your business? What are you expecting? Because I generally wanted to learn how are they operating their business in this, what I'd call transformational time, no inventory to low inventory to a shitload of inventory. Okay. How do you manage your business appropriately with climbing interest rates and all those macroeconomic factors? And, and I think that the thing that we realized is through this consolidation, they're just sitting back saying, okay, maybe we haven't been investing in technology and software, but we need to do that yeah. because there's no other way to manage our business if we don't have this type of technology. There's a, I won't name the dealership, but um, over 20 store John Deere dealership group, uh, VP of sales comes in. He's like, well, and I came from out of the industry and I came in as VP of sales and I have no idea what my salespeople are doing at these 20 plus dealerships because I don't have a CRM. Like, how am I supposed to manage? Yeah. And so, <laughs> like, having that that dashboard is is, is critical to that success. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> That's the one thing that I was coming from um, a different. In- I came from the construction industry. Yeah. And moved into the to the ag side of it, um, and. The thing about the construction side of it was you, there was pipelines. We had a what I did this week. This is what I'm doing tomorrow, next week, right? Yeah. And you went through the whole thing, and you had to talk to your customer base. You saw what those people, what they did, didn't do. What they talked about close ratios. You talked about those kind of things. And I think as you're looking at the sales information that's out there now, we are slowly getting into the time frame where understanding what what your salespeople. Not like, what are you doing today? But how much money are you going to go out and make today? Like, what does it look like today? Yeah. What's What does this month look like for you? Not because I'm worried about how much your paycheck is going to be, because I'm worried about how much cash flow are we going to have, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think that's the that's the big the big nature of what we're seeing it. So, I mean, for, when you're looking inside of Anvil and you're talking about the stuff that's there, you're really not that far away from being able to track somebody's overall um, mm-hmm. close ratio with some yep. of the reports you can pull in and out. Let's talk Absolutely. about that a little bit. 
you know, managing that sales team. That's a quote from one of our dealers there is I, before Anvil, I really felt like I was a sales admin, like I was working for my salespeople. And once I got that visibility and I had the visual pipeline manager and my sales team was able to really know what was going on, I felt more like a coach because then I could refer to that and say, here's, here's what we're working on. Here's what you're going to do next. I can help you here. I can make this. I can connect that. And it changed the sales meetings from, hey, what you working on? To uh, let's talk about this deal. Let's talk about that deal. How can we do this? And that's where those salespeople that were that were good, but just maybe didn't have the right skills or the right training or the right background or something that made them double sales, uh, just because they got organized customer feedback, customer follow up. Just happened that much better. And the other side of it was not destroying the relationship part. I mean, it's part of the name CRM. It's not a four letter word. It does actually provide value, and the reason is. It helps you with the relationship by giving you that better data, the better understanding, so that when you have that customer visit, you can go out there and he's like, well, where's this machine at? Or when's that one going to come in? Or how's this deal going? You've got it all right at your fingertips. Yeah. And that's the that's the message. That's the result we're going for is so that in taking care of those customers, you are improving their experience. Yeah. They're, they're giving them much better. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and I think that's, the, that's one of the key takeaways with, with being around Anvil, the, the time that we've been around here, working on this stuff with, with each other, I, I think it, it gives you that that opportunity to really step back and be like, you've, you've had this this specific deal in your queue now for 60 right. days, right? You've ordered it, done everything, we've gone back and forth, you've moved it all over the place. What's what's the hold up here? Why is this? I'm not really worried about this one over here that I know you're going to get. Exactly. I'm worried. What's what's keeping this one from happening? Right. And you can really start asking those earnest questions about yeah. what is it? An interest rate thing? Is it the trade not right? Is it the what is it? What is it? What is it? You know yeah. what what information can be pulled down? And I think from the from a market perspective, the data that you're going to be pulling out that's readily at your fingertips that with Tractor Zoom is going to really. Yeah. Open that conversation up when you can. When I'm sitting across from customer, and I can. It's like, okay, so these are here's what here's things that are listed. Here's uh, auction values, and here's where your machine falls in at based around this right. stuff right here. And here's how come we got the 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 pricing that we're going to get. And this is this is why we're pricing our stuff this way. And you can go through the you know this is the margin, this is the reconditioning, this is that and the other thing, and have that that the philosophical yeah. question of what it's worth type of thing. But yeah. Yeah. but you can sit there and say like you know. Without a doubt, we know we're going to get somewhere between X and Y for your machine. And that's why we're pricing it this way. And and what I think is so cool about that right there is you can have those conversations and you have that data at your fingertips. Right. And you're having real conversations with real data yeah. with farmers who buy everything with an ROI. Right. Unless they just feel like buying another tractor. And then, right. Uh, right. For, for tax, tax, for tax <laughs> depreciation. But like <laughs> the whole ag economy sells to farmers on ROI. Here's your ROI if you spend... If you spend this much on fungicide, you're going to get $4 an acre back, right? right. I know it's expensive, but fungicide is pretty proven, and you have that 4X ROI. Yeah. So I, I just think that their farmers are, as the consumer here, is, is they, they think of it that way. And if we can immediately pull that up and show that to them while they're in and they're very interested in doing a deal, it doesn't. we don't have to sit there and wait for a day to pull those numbers and they have it come in or you send them yeah. like a, a PO the next day. Like... I don't know have a, a specific statistic, but if you let somebody sleep on a deal, yeah. the, the odds of them closing continue to go down. Time kills all deals. Yeah. And, and the longer it takes to get something done, the less excitement that that, that buyer's going to have. Yeah. Well, and that, that is really where I'm very excited about where we're going to be able to take this is because we started with how do we help the used equipment evaluators? And it was better auction values, better data. Well, then we're like, this information is so much more usable at the sales team level, at the management level, at the customer level. You go to buy a car today and you're going to trade something in, you come in knowing exactly what you're going to get for it almost because right. you go out there and you, you re research and everything else. And then you go to your poor salesman and they don't, they're not equipped to answer all of your questions. Now we're going to be able to give that experience on the ag side. It's like, here's what you think it's worth. Here's what we know it's worth from what we have from all the data we have as well. Let's have a true conversation. And that's a much better experience for both the customer and the salesperson in the dealership. Yep. Yep. So I guess probably the probably the last thing that everyone's sitting here watching this now and the dealerships that are that you guys are working with. Um, as you guys come together and your teams come together. Yeah. yeah. 
what what are some of the things that they should expect to see happening there? Yeah, so I mean, right out of the gates, we're, we're making investment decisions on on implementation and customer success directly towards yeah. the the uh, both sides, but but uh, very heavily weighted on on the Anvil side. Anvil's had a lot of demand. Yeah. Let's 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 make those investments. We just approved six hires today, two days after the acquisition. Yeah. So, like, let's continue to staff up because we see so much. We see tremendous value here for customers. Let's make sure that it's an amazing experience, yeah. and then after that. We're, we're going to continue investing in data science um, and, and scaling this product for our customers' growth. So they shouldn't see any disruption in service by any means. There's nothing catastrophic happening to the Anvil, Anvil product, right? All we're doing is we, we're going to help Anvil grow faster so it's a better customer experience. And then listen to the customer and figure out how else can TractorZoom and Anvil bring data to the table for those dealers to, to drive their sales, to go hit market share goals, and then ultimately reduce risk on new deals. Yeah. Right. Because what we've learned is dealership processes across, they're 90% the same across every customer as sure. we go into there. But what we've been uh, able to do and we're going to do more of and deliver on is uh, get every dealer up and running fast on time as we promised. And that's our goal with uh, with the additional resources there as well. And that's what we're going to deliver on. But then it doesn't stop there either. So as we talk about some of the ways to improve your trade eval process, inventory management process as well, that's where those resources are going to go as well to help train, learn. So all the stuff that we've talked about is put in action at the dealerships fast and on time. Right on. Well, guys, it's an exciting time. And I, 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 my hat's off to you guys. It's going to be a, a fun venture for you to, yes, it is. And to see how this works out and see what more uh, innovative stuff you guys can come up with. So. Well, I look forward to watching what happens in 24. Yeah. yeah well, I think you'll be able to use the integration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll probably be able to. <laughs> so, all right, Kyle, folks want to reach out to you. What's the best way to get a hold of, get, of you? Yeah. I, I think for the listeners here, if you're shopping for equipment, go to tractorzoom.com. Uh, if you're interested in anything Jason and I are talking about, you can go to tractorzoompro.com, learn some more, or in blackbooks.com. Um, hit me up on LinkedIn if you ever want. Um, I, I, I'm pretty accessible there. Right. Yeah, Jason, what's the best way to get hold of you? Same way as well for uh, AnvilAppWorks.com is where you can read about other customers using our products and how it works and the integrations and what Dwayne's told us and all the other dealers have, have expressed across, as well as sales at AnvilAppWorks.com. Or if you want to reach out to me as well, it's uh, jholt at TractorZoom.com. Right on. Oh, you added the TractorZoom.com in there already. Hey, that's, uh, Look at that. Uh, integrations coming in two days. You got your email. <laughs> coming in hot. Coming in hot. All right, folks. Well, guys, I appreciate it. We'll see what uh, get. Watch us go in over 24, and we'll, we'll keep in touch. Thanks for having us on, Casey. Right on. Thank you. I'm Casey Seymour with Moving Iron Podcast. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. Go to LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast. Go to, I'm all over the place now, Snapchat, TikTok. I'm on uh, YouTube. Get to watch a video version of this at Moving Iron LLC. Or, so that's at Moving Iron Podcast. And go to Moving Iron LLC for everything Moving Iron related. So, you Merry Christmas. TikTok dance now? No. God, oh. no. That's, <laughs> no. No one wants to see that. <laughs> So, so Merry Christmas to you guys, and Happy New Year, and uh, we'll go from there. So with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Jason Holt and Kyle McMahon. It's going to be smart, folks. Out. When you partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800 800- 657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. No matter how you buy your ag equipment, whether it's from a dealer, an auction, or a private party, AgDirect can help you finance it. You can even apply online at agdirect.com. 
Learn more about your financing options at agdirect.com. TractorZoom has access to over $20 billion in heavy equipment sales data. TractorZoom's Iron Comps is the industry's trusted solution for transparent equipment values and auctionable pricing insights. This podcast is brought to you by Anvil AppWorks. The Dealer Connect CRMI app with integrated inventory management is an affordable Salesforce-based solution for your dealership. Create connected customer experience and transform how you work. Moving higher in the 21st century. Hard work. 